give it like another two seconds. Let me see. Yes! We're live! Happy Tuesday, everybody! Welcome back to Bravo Music Academy on this Thanksgiving week. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, as you can see, I'm here alone, maskless, and we have some really cool things that we're going to talk about today. Before uh, we begin, I would like to remind you that we do still have our holiday music play dates coming up. We've got three dates coming up in December, um, and they can be found on our website. I will put a link in the description box, but if you're interested in that, feel free to send us a message, and we'll get you signed up for it. There are We've had them in October and November. It's so much fun. I love it, and the kids are loving it, so it's a really good time. I hope you join us. So today, we are talking about the staff and reading notes on the staff. I had a conversation with one of my students a couple of weeks ago when we were taking our little mini break, and we were talking about how the method books, um, the piano method books, they introduce notes one at a time because not only are you learning how to read them on the staff, you're also learning how to play them on the piano and correlate the two together. But when you look at a theory book, they give you everything all at once. And so she was asking about why they do that. And so we talked about some of the logistics of that. But then I thought it'd be really good to show everybody how you, easy it is to read all of the notes on the entire staff and then you can gradually add in how you're playing them while you're reading them. So that's what we're going to go over today. If you are joining me live, please say hello. If you're catching this on the replay, also say hello. I, am, I have a little different setup here. I have a camera here and my laptop is over there. But I'm going to peek over every so often to see if I can catch some comments and uh, questions and I'll answer them as we go. So let's dive right in. On the board behind me, I'm blocking a little bit. I'm actually going to go to this side over here. We have our grand staff. Now over the summer, you guys saw uh, Mia and Gianna. They did an entire Teacher to Tuesday on the staff and on the grand staff. I will also later link that in the show notes below. The grand staff, really quick rundown for those of you who missed it. The grand staff is made up of two staves, the treble and the bass. A staff, very simply, is five lines. I mean, you can use your fingers for it, one, two, three, four, five, and the four spaces in between those five lines. When we put a clef on it, that tells us where certain notes are. And when we put them one on top of the other with a bar line, or just a line, and a brace, that creates the grand staff. Pianists play on the grand staff. Conductors read on a very extensive grand staff. Um, and choral music is written on a grand staff usually. Most other instruments, if it's a solo voice or if it's um, guitar, ukulele, woodwinds, brass, orchest orchestral strings, those are all typically going to read on a single line treble clef or bass clef. But there are a few instruments that do play both. So knowing how to read both is not essential to every instrumentalist, but knowing it really makes you a good, well-rounded musician. And that's what we go for here, is, is just giving our students as much as we can give them. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna talk about how to read notes on the staff. When we're looking at the notes, we have two kinds of notes. And I'm using whole notes today, um, but when you're reading music, you will see other rhythms in there. Whole notes are just the quickest and easiest ones to draw. So there are two kinds of notes when you're reading on the staff. There are line notes, which I'm drawing in pink. And there are space notes. And I'm just now realizing I should have made my staff longer. <laughs> That's okay. I'll write smaller in the treble staff. And we'll just extend this one here. There we go. So the line notes, if you notice, have a line cutting through. Whoops. They have a line cutting through the head. Now, um, funny little story. I was teaching 
one of my little ones about line notes and space notes over the summer. And he goes, Miss Christy, they're, they're cutting it through their heads, so that means they're dead notes. And I went, well, yeah, okay, sure. But that stuck. <laughs> so every time I said, is that a line note or a space note, I would get, it's a dead note. <laughs> so funny. Oh my gosh, these kids crack me up, I'm telling you. Okay, so line notes cut through the notes head. If I was to have a, I'm going to do a quick little stab here. If I was to have a, a half note with the line cutting through it, can you guys see that? You can, you guys, you guys. Um, with the line cutting through it, you can still see the line cutting through it. If I make that into a quarter note, you can't see the line cutting through it, but you can see it coming out on either side of the head, and that is still a line note. It's just a matter of where the line is placed, not whether or not you can actually see the line going through it. Okay, little sidebar done. Those are our two kinds of notes. They match both treble and bass. There are five line notes because there are five lines. There are four space notes because there are four spaces between those lines. With me? I hope so. If not, you can rewind and check it out again. So when we number our lines, we number them like a staircase. If you were walking up the stairs, you go from the bottom to the top. So we number our lines one, two, three, four, five, and we number our spaces one, two, three, four, bottom to top. Now that's not how we name the notes because we use the music alphabet, which I believe we did a teacher tip Tuesday on quite a while ago. If you want to go check the archives, go for it. Um, I don't know which one it was, <laughs> but I know we did it. So the music alphabet, very brief review, is just the first seven letters of the English alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then we repeat it again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, forever and infinity. When we go up, we say the alphabet forwards. When we go down, we say the alphabet backwards. Okay? Now, to name our notes, we use those seven letters of the alphabet. And we're going to go with, we're going to go with another color. I'm going to go with my green over here so that he doesn't feel left out. Now, there are a lot of different schools of thought on how to teach this. Some people use um, sentences and, what's the word, anagra anagrams? abbreviations. I don't remember. It's an A word. If you know it, let me know because I'm not thinking of it. Um, some people use it for both the line notes and the space notes. Some people use it only for one or the other. Personally, when I'm teaching a student to read the full staff, I only teach the space notes. And then we use the music alphabet to find the line notes in between. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We're going to start with our first space note and our first letter of the alphabet, and they line up. So remember, we always count from the bottom to the top, so we always start at the bottom. The first letter is A. The second space is actually the third letter because we have a line note in between it. So that becomes C. Then we have E. Then we have G. Now, most people know all cows eat grass. That's been around for a very long time. I almost said the beginning of time, but, you know, it's been around for a very, very long time. Recently, I've heard a couple of other ones, and more recently, I also had students come up with their own. So a lot of times what my students will do is they'll say, all cows eat, and then they get to make up their own G word. So whether it's grapes or they can keep grass, um, one kid said grandma, another kid said garbage, another kid said giraffes. So whatever you can come up with that will help you remember, go for it. But the most recent one that I've heard was always, and I like it a lot by the way, always carry extra walk. 
I love that so much. I love guacamole. So it makes sense that I would love that. Always carry extra guac. Now when I'm teaching that to my students, we then go and we figure out the line notes based on their relationship to those space notes. So if we're trying to figure out line four, we would say our sentence, always carry extra guac. And that line four comes between our third space, which is E, and our fourth space, which is G. If we use our music alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, well, that means that line must be F, and it is. This guy, I'm going to make that right over there, is F. That's how I teach it to my piano students. Today, we're going to just learn the whole thing. All right, so here it goes. Always carry extra guac. What does guac go with? Burritos. And good. Oh, I'm going to run out of room. I'll make it work. Good burritos don't fall apart. Good burritos don't fall apart. G, B, D, F, A. Always carry extra guac. A, C, E, G. Those are the lines and spaces for the base staff. Now, that's the base staff. We still have a treble staff to do. Are they the same? Does anybody know? I see a comment. I'm going to peek over and see who it is. Thank you, Mom! Thank you. I think I just shouted in your ear. I'm sorry, because I feel like my microphone is very close. Mnemonic device. Yes, thank you. It's a mnemonic. I don't know why I thought it started with an A. Oh, I need a break. So, on to our treble staff. It is not the same because the clef is different. Bass clef shows us where F is with all those little dots. But the treble clef does not have a dot. It has a circle. And that circle shows us where the G line is. So we're going to use our mnemonic device, thank you again, to learn our lines and spaces on the treble staff. The first one we're going to do is one that most people associate with knowing the lines and spaces on the staff. And it's the easiest one, it's the first one that comes to everybody's head. It's the word face. And face has four letters, so it's the four spaces of the treble staff. Now, remember, we count from the bottom up in the treble staff just the same way we do in the bass staff. So our F is the first space, and that's one good way to remember it. Use that F first. First starts with F, F is the first space. Use that little alliteration thing going on there for that one. Now we could go back and we could do our music alphabet and figure out all the letters. That would take quite some time, so I'm gonna tell you what it is. The, space, the line notes, oh my goodness, the line notes are E, G, B, D, and F. And this is the one that everybody else also knows. Every good boy does fine. Now, I have also heard every good boy deserves fudge. I don't like using that one because usually good burritos don't fall apart is not used when people know the one about the fudge. And then so much fudge gets on both staffs and it just gets messy. And so we're not gonna use that one. We're going to use every good boy does fine. Now you can use any mnemonic device you want for this. You can use any sentence. You can use any word. Actually, you can't use any word. Face is the only word that really but you can turn each of these letters into whatever word you want. My favorite is actually not this one. 
It's one that I made up when I was teaching third, I was teaching elementary band, fourth and fifth grade band, and I had third graders for flutophone. And they could not remember this because they had the learned the fudge version. And for those of you who don't know, the bass clef that goes with the fudge version is good boys deserve fudge always. If that's not confusing, I don't know what is. Because, well, do we say every good boy deserves fudge always? Or good boys deserve fudge always every day? What? So we avoid the fudge, at least on the staff. What I came up with for my third graders was Elephants Go Belly Dancing Fridays. And the way I introduced it was I had them close their eyes in the class, take a deep breath, and imagine an elephant standing up on his back two legs. He's got a little skirt on. He's got the little jingle bells on the bottom. And he's doing his belly dancing thing. It's stuck. That's all I can tell you. It's stuck. And I would have third graders coming up to me, getting themselves in trouble because they're stepping out of line and going, Miss Ventura, Miss Ventura, guess what? Elephants go belly dancing Fridays. And they loved it. So whatever you need to use to remember that is totally okay. As long as those lines, those words for the lines start with the correct letters. So let's do a quick recap. Our treble staff is focused on that little circle of our treble clef, which shows us where G is. And we have every good boy does fine, along with face, where the space is. The bass clef is all about the food. Good burritos don't fall apart. Always carry extra guac. God, I have this guacamole. Now I kind of want some. I might have to go stop for some on the way home today. So that's everything I have for you. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have questions or if you want to see more Teacher Tip Tuesdays like this, where we go over some of the finer nitty gritty stuff of music reading and um, music in general, let me know. And I hope you all have a wonderful, amazing Thanksgiving. We will be back next week. I will not be here. I'll probably be home at my... Uh, at my home studio, so I will catch you then, and have an awesome week. Bye, everyone.